funeral because his body was evident. But the defendant took away my chance to say goodbye to Corey. <laughs> Molly was passing away, and not once did he pick up the phone he was using to converse with many of his girlfriends to call 911 to seek medical attention, which could have potentially saved Corey's life. Instead, he allowed Corey to suffer silently for hours. Once he realized how bad it was, he threw him in the car and then proceeded to drive 15 minutes to the hospital. <sighs> he slowly walked Corey into the hospital with no sense of urgency, even when he knew how bad his condition was. I fully believe that if we took Corey to the hospital as soon as he received the lethal blow, he could still be here today. There were many steps he could have taken to save my son's life. Instead, he sat home and let Corey slowly die for hours. Every day since April 2nd has been an absolute living nightmare, and it is now the new reality for me to replay Corey's horrific death repeatedly in my head. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about before I fall asleep at night. I dread normal conversation with people because I always get asked, how many kids do you have? I say two, and they follow up asking how old are they. That's when the grief sinks in, and I have to tell them my six-year-old was killed by his father. It is such an indescribable feeling when I, when I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. A sense of guilt was all I could feel. I wanted more kids, but how do I love another child? Is it fair to Corey? That is all I could think about. Now I know this is not true, and I love my daughter with all my heart, but I always will feel an emptiness, no matter how many children I have. My new reality is explaining to my daughter what happens to her big brother and why is he not here. I live in fear every day, every second of the day, that something will happen to my daughter, and I will lose her too. It's a horrible feeling, and it causes me such bad anxiety. I take her to the cemetery to see Corey every weekend. And at a year and a half old, she knows where Corey is, buried. It is every week. It is heartbreaking. She sits and pleads with the cars and toys we left there for him. I live in a nightmare, and I would never wish this feeling or how I must live with all my worst enemy. Throughout everything he did to Corey, Corey still loved him. He looked up to you. And he wanted, still wanted to be, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he still wanted him to be like a real father who treated him like a son. Instead of being a good role model for Corey, he decided to beat him to death. <sighs> Why? <laughs> Was he, je were he jealous of him? <sighs> Did you hate me so much that you took it out on Corey? <sighs> were you abused as a child? Not that that's a good excuse, because you could have overcome it and became the protector he needed as a child, but instead you became a killer. And there was no amount of love in his actions and only a disturbing amount of hate. It seems like he hated Corey simply because I loved him, and he felt deprived of that love. He couldn't even control himself for long because after the first visit with my son, he started abusing him. My son didn't even know him, and he was beating him. He was abusing him from the first time. I thank God. I hate you for not letting me say goodbye to my son, but I thank God your face is not the last one he saw. I'm sorry. What this monster did was pathetic disgusting, and I wish him nothing but the worst. One could only hope that karma comes to him quickly. After all he's done, you would hope he'd admit what he's done, but no. Instead of grieving, I had to fight for justice for three long years. Go to trial just to relive everything. I had to see that video that I never wanted to see. I didn't have to see it until two weeks before this trial. I went three years without seeing it. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, just for you to be found guilty anyway. What was the point of that? Just to make it worse for us? Are you that crazy that you convinced yourself you didn't do this? I hate you. Um, I will never forgive you. And 
I'm gonna skip that one. <sighs> you have stolen my full potential at happiness. And I will never have my son back. My family will never feel whole again. My daughter will never get to meet her brother. And my boyfriend will never get to be the father that the defendant should have been to our son. You took my whole, he took my whole world away from me. He has shown and proven to be that special kind of dirtbag he claimed I was. Your Honor, all this monster had to do was say he did not want to be a father. <laughs> no one would have made him. I would have happily continued to raise my son alone with the help of my family. He had many opportunities not to do this to him. He is in this cur current situ situation due to his own actions. And every day he will have to Well, you don't need me to analyze that. We've got to take a short break, but we're going to come right back and hear more of the victim impact statements from Brianna Michelow. Come back and see us on the other side.